Hey y'all, Michael Smith here with the Bluefield Group and today I'm sitting with Julie Melser of Homebridge Financial and we're going to be talking about reverse mortgages. So Julie, what exactly is a reverse mortgage? A reverse mortgage is simply a way for homeowners to be able to tap into the equity in their homes and utilize that now for things that they may need or want without having to make a payment. It's literally designed for senior citizens or people retired over the age of 62. Okay, so what's the difference between a reverse mortgage and like a HELOC, a home equity line of credit? Great question. So the big differences between the two are number one, um, equity lines or HELOCs as you refer to them, uh, you follow the traditional guidelines for mortgages and they can be difficult to qualify for when someone is retired and on a fixed income. Reverse mortgages are easier to qualify for. Okay. Number two, there's no payment required with a reverse mortgage and that's the big piece. Uh, if you get an equity loan or a HELOC, there's going to be a payment required. Uh, and there is none with reverse as it's designed for retired people. Uh, and lastly, HELOCs tend to have a life expectancy of five to 10 years and the bank wants to call them due or restructure them where a reverse mortgage, the, the loan is in place for the remainder of their lifetime. Okay, so if I'm sitting here and I own my home free and clear, I've got a whole bunch of equity, um, how long can I stretch that reverse mortgage out number? Absolutely. The, the amount of money that a person is eligible for or a couple is based on their ages and the value of the home. Uh, they're given choices on how they want to take the money. They can set it up as a payment to themselves, a line of credit, a lump sum, um, and then that money is theirs until they permanently leave their home, whatever the end result may be for that permanent. Uh, okay. So a person who has a reverse mortgage, yeah. there's no risk of foreclosure, is there, that right? There, there is, there's no risk for closure of foreclosure with the loan itself. The borrowers are required to pay their own property taxes and homeowners insurance. Okay. Uh, and that is your risk. They have to remember and they are counseled. We counsel them and they have to go through independent counseling to remind them that they are responsible to pay the property taxes so right. the county does not foreclose on them. Right, home. but they're never going to make no. any payments on that reverse no. mortgage. And there's no payments ever okay. due on a reverse mortgage. Okay. So what are some common misconceptions? Good question. Common misconceptions. Uh, the bank does not own your home when you do a reverse mortgage. A reverse mortgage is nothing more than a, a traditional mortgage loan. It's the same thing. It's a lien on the property. So the deed stays in the name of the owners of the home always uh, and the bank does not take the home. Um, at the end, when the homeowner permanently leaves the home, you have a loan balance due just like a traditional mortgage and most people choose to sell the home or the estate or the children sell the home to pay off the loan. It doesn't have to be that way. If they have money elsewhere, they can pay off the loan and keep the home. It's up to them. Okay. Okay. So what might be a scenario in which a reverse mortgage would be a good fit? Great question. The only person that really isn't a good candidate for a reverse mortgage is a homeowner who has a quote unquote family home. They want that particular home to stay in the family. Okay. If it's not that situation, then everyone else should at least look at a reverse mortgage because it's a great opportunity to use the money now while you need it rather than leaving it tied up in your home until you're gone. Gotcha. Yeah, I know a lot of our elderly clients have said that they um, don't want any debt and that's mm -hmm. why they might be hesitant to take on a reverse mortgage. It is, right? it is, and it's a it's a scary thought for them, but the fact of the matter is is that the baby boomer population is realizing that you know they have all this money sitting tied up in their homes uh, and it's going to stay there until they're gone, but they need things now. Right. They need in-home care. They need long-term care insurance, um, you know, various things like that. And the children are starting to get on board too and say, you know, this makes more sense. Let's use the money that's tied up in your house right now to make sure that you have a great end of life experience and you can age in place as you should rather than letting it sit there until you're gone. Right. I, I kind of view that the same way as, um, let's say that I have a large balance in my 401k mm -hmm. and I want to try and live off only the interest without draining any of the principal, yeah. right? When in reality, there might be a big enough balance there to where I could take out enough to live comfortably for many years and not ever run out. Exactly. Right? Same thing with the equity in your home. Same thing with the equity. And it's being used for a lot of different ways. The loan was born out of need uh, and it's been around since 1961 if you can oh, wow. imagine that it's been around for a long time um, but right now more of what we see happening is I call it strategic financial planning okay. uh, people are using it financial planners are advising uh, you know 
let's use up this asset and leave your retirement portfolio in place and let it continue to grow you know as a lump sum because it's going to grow faster than the equity in your house is going to grow so you use up this asset first and that ultimately ends up leaving them in a better financial position than they were had they just left their house paid right. off so this is not always about a case of need um, okay. you know very popular use is just to pay off the remaining balance of a traditional mortgage and get rid of the monthly payment gotcha. you know as you well know it doesn't matter if you only have twenty thousand dollars left on your mortgage you're still making the full payment that you right. did when the mortgage was two hundred thousand so right. getting rid of that payment can make a big difference in a retired big person's in life monthly budget yeah absolutely absolutely okay so julie i heard that you can actually purchase a home using a reverse mortgage is that, that right? is true that is actually true um one of the very first um loans that i handled in this market was a a sweet little lady who was 72 uh, she sold her home in Simpsonville and wanted to move back to Greer and so after she paid all the fees and everything she she had about a hundred thousand dollars to work with um, so okay. as you can imagine in this market finding a home for a hundred thousand dollars is a difficult. bit of a challenge <laughs> so um, I came into the picture at that point and got involved and sat down with them and how it worked is she ended up purchasing a hundred and sixty thousand dollar home she was eligible for a reverse mortgage in the amount of about eighty thousand dollars and a reverse re mortgage remember is just like a traditional mortgage so you know we send the money to the attorney's office at closing just like a traditional mortgage loan so she received eighty thousand dollars from us she brought the additional eighty thousand dollars to complete the purchase of one hundred and sixty thousand and and that was the end of the of the transaction so she ended up in a much nicer safer home uh, and everyone in the in the process benefited and she still had twenty thousand dollars left over uh, to put in the bank so, so she purchased a home for 160 yes she brought 80 put 20 in the bank and now she's got a lien of 80,000 but yes. she's not making any payments she makes no payments as long as she's permanently living in that home Wow yes and now there is no catch to this loan that sounds too good to be true the bank still makes their money but instead of collecting a payment from the borrowers every month and taking their interest monthly they're just getting it at the end when the borrower leaves the home permanently and sells the home they're getting all of their interest in a lump sum so okay. there's no magic bullet this is not a you know there's no secret formula they're just restructuring when the bank makes all of their money so it's an example. it's a negative amortization it is loan, a negative right? amortization so the balance loan. is going the up balance a little is bit. going to grow yes okay. absolutely now what if market values go down or if she lives longer than she thought and she ends up owing more than the house is worth another great question so uh, one of the big things that HUD has changed that's made this such a great loan now is they made it what's called a, a non-recourse loan uh, it is an FHA loan and as you know with FHA loans you pay enough front mortgage insurance premium that HUD actually collects and pools that money uh, so with the reverse loans they made this they use that to make this a non-recourse loan which means that the borrowers are never going to be liable to pay back more than the current market value of the home when they leave it no matter what their loan balance is HUD will pay the difference and it's not like Medicaid there's no look back they're not checking their other assets or you know going back on the estate so if, if the homeowner does pass away and they happen to be upside down on the home that deficit balance is not going to be able to attach to any of their other assets absolutely if they pass away and they owe two hundred and fifty thousand and uh, on their reverse mortgage loan balance and the home is worth two hundred uh, their children or their estate would sell the home and pay the two hundred to the lender and HUD would pay the additional fifty thousand no questions asked so that doesn't negatively impact any other portion of their estate and no, any other accounts. It does not. Wow, that's phenomenal. Yes. More people need to know about this. <laughs> Absolutely, they do. It's it's a wonderful, wonderful loan. Uh, these are also called home equity conversion mortgages. For those of you doing any research, uh, HECM is the abbreviation. Uh, literally, there's so much negative stigma attached to reverse mortgages that they're trying to change the name, but it's the exact same thing. Wow, that's yeah. phenomenal. Well, guys, uh, that's it for this video. Julie, thank you so much for your time. I greatly appreciate it. I, I feel like this content was very valuable. Um, if you guys have any specific questions, please reach out to us. We'll love to chat with you, put you in touch with Julie. Um, and we want to continue to bring you great educational content like this. So if there's any topic you really want us to cover, please leave that in the comments below. And uh, Julie, thank you for your time thank so you. much. Appreciate and we will see you all on the next one.